Hi, everybody. This is Coach Henry. Welcome to another amazing edition of Positive Traction. Today, due to popular, I mean overflowing responses from the greatest, our two fans, both of them requesting Peanut and Sea Money. Here we are, the infamous <laughs> Zachariah Cassidyanna. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having us. Happy to be back. You had no choice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I had no choice. Small print. Daughter back on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited to be here again and be on the hot seat. Well, let's get into it because last time you left our fans, all two of them, very, very... <laughs> we have more fans than that. <laughs> There's We're three growing. of you, three of you include Amari. <laughs> um, <laughs> you... Uh, you left everybody hanging a little bit with big news. Yeah. Uh, the way the angle is, you really can't see. So what is the big news, Cassidyanna? Well, well, when we did our first podcast together, it was in January. So it is now, putting this in reference, it is now end of May. So that's like five months have almost passed. Yeah. And the big news was, I just found out in January that my husband and I are expecting our first baby. <laughs> yes. So we are just entering the sixth month of pregnancy. And That's we awesome. have a baby on the way coming in September, a baby boy. Baby boy. I think uh, depending on when this airs, hopefully the name is selected. If not, LW is going to stick. <laughs> so we need a name, guys. So if, if you see clips, send us names. Yeah, give us some name back to the comments. <laughs> You know, even in the reviews, after you leave great reviews of the show, you know, some name reviews for Baby Boy. I love it. I love it. Well, welcome both. Obviously, it's a it's a big blessing to sit here and have uh, pride and joys that both of you are to me and to our family. Uh, Zach had a baby girl, obviously his wife did, and you now, Baby Boy, it's pretty cool. The opposites all the way around. And mm -hmm. God, God, listen, him and I have a good thing going on. So. <laughs> peanut little gallery coming up the alley but that being said why don't we catch up a little bit zach give us a little bit of update what's going on in your life and then cast a little bit on yours and then um <clears throat> i do got a couple of good things i think people really uh want to hear you all have to say yeah awesome well like i said happy to be back um updates from january um well amari now is eight months old eight and a half I'm sorry, mm -hmm. 10 no, months old. 10 I'm months sorry. old. Uh, yeah. Sorry, time's already going real quick, but she's 10 and a half months old, almost to be 11 months. Uh, we're coming up on her one year birthday, which is insane. Uh, she's a crawler. She's going to start walking any moment. She's starting to um, mimic you. So she's starting to learn how to copy the words that you're saying. So we were practicing stick the other day, uh, practicing mama last night. She has data down. I don't even have to practice that one. Um, <laughs> that one just flows right out. So I'm happy well, about that. Well, we did have a debate if it was dada or dum dum. I can uh, I don't know which one it was, but but we'll go with what you said. It's very that. clearly dada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so she's doing good. My wife uh, Nikki's doing amazing, um, and work wise, we're doing really well. Um, I'm the project director over at Brownstone. Um, we have some projects. We actually just finished a project a couple months ago. Um, it's under contract and about to close this upcoming week. So very excited and happy about that. A couple other projects that actually went under contract still two months out from completion. Um, so that's a huge boost of confidence in the workspace. And then church has been going really well. I lead the Next Steps team at our church over at Victory City Church in Fleurville, Texas. Um, and uh, really happy to be there. Love what God's doing at that church. Um, yeah, just love what God's doing. And then second, last thing, personal note, I've been training for a triathlon. Ooh. Yes, um, that's so awesome. I'm really excited to be doing that with my brother, JP. Um, we'll be doing the, our, well, my first triathlon, his second triathlon, um, two days from now. So Very excited. Well, that was a big reason it all came together beautifully. And I'm proud of how you guys are pushing each other. The, again, the victory is already done. Honestly, yeah, it's pretty, absolutely. I, that's how I feel. I yeah. really feel that we put the hard work in and whatever happens come Monday, we're already successful and we're already victorious. It. I love it. And baby girl, what about, what can you uh, <clears throat> share with our... Three fans. Don't keep saying that. We've got more fans. <laughs> We're back by popular demand. Oh, you know? yeah, you're right. You're right. Amari so... goes, more, more, more. <laughs> she goes, uh, more, more, more. Oh. Yeah, more. Okay. More, more. Um, for me, obviously, the biggest, 
actually there's multiple changes. There was a big, January was a very shifting month and coming on the podcast was also, it's crazy how it all lined up and how it all teed up and the early December or early January, right after the new year, I, for my, my, my career wise, if you will, I went full entrepreneurial. Like mm-hmm. I went from a salary based position where it was, you know, constant income to moving into a full contractor position and starting in the world of like a true entrepreneur, like started my own business a few years ago, but I was only using that and only using that with certain things and wasn't really fully dive. I didn't dive into that world yet. So I went full entrepreneurial and then kid you not, five days later, I found out I was pregnant and mm. that was a big, that was a big, oh my gosh, what, what's happening? Right. Uh, you know, you, you, I went through a phase of like, I'm so excited and you know, I, so excited for my husband and I to start growing a family, but at the same time, that fear of not having a steady income, you know, from a corporate position, if you will, to an entrepreneur, like I, I don't make money unless I'm going, I have to go get it. I have to go, yeah. go, yeah. go make it work and go yeah. make it happen. And so it's like, my mind was going into switching into your whole life changes in a matter of moment. When you see that positive, that positive, stick and you're holding it and your my mind's like so excited but then reality set in on the other side oh my gosh like i just made a huge career move i took a bet on myself i took a chance on myself to to chase after things that i know i've been working for but it was like whoa all this happened at, at at once and i was scared and it took a minute and i'm still growing i'm still learning but the way that it all unraveled and the continues to unravel and the pieces that have fallen into place are just more of a, uh, I, I've never been more proud of myself and also scared at the same time, but it's made me push even harder yeah. to um, not only for myself and for my husband, but now for a baby boy that's coming on the way. Like I was filled with fear at first because I was scared not to make enough money or, oh my gosh, what happens when I need to take some time off to, to be a mom for a second? <clears throat> and, to go with all of what goes with having a baby. But um, I'm happy to say that it's, it's all, it's been a tremendous growing uh, path. It's been hard. It's been stressful. I've worked so hard. I've longer hours than I did before um, because, you know, I'm in the hot seat of, I have to make it happen if I want it. You know, I'm, yeah. I have to go source the, the deals and all and everything that's lined up even just now with things that you and I are working on together, dad, which we'll share more later on, I'm sure. But it's just, there was a lot of changes that happened in January, but it's definitely prepared me and it's prepared me to be here today and speak with confidence that that it's, it's all working. Amen. Well, no, those are great shares, guys. And look, <clears throat> part of why I think people related to us is because <clears throat> we do pay a price. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's not easy to have the bond and the crossover that we have, so I think it is our honor and our privilege to be able to share some of that with people, uh, that they can avoid some of the things that we had to go through, or even when we see something that might be a hurdle to, you know, I, I'm gonna start with you, Cass, because uh, I, a lot of our conversations, I always start, daddy first, <laughs> right? And I know uh, for you, you, you know, I know you know why I say it, but it was learning things that Zach and I went through, right, because, mm-hmm. um, you know, yes, daddy first always, but it wasn't the words I said to him, but it took quite a bit. He says that too, because I made him say it to me. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Is that true? No, that's 100% why. Oh there my were, gosh, there was times in us developing our business well, relationship. Well, for reference for people listening, this is about us working together, our business lives. And yes. Just so yes. people Thank understand you. what you're saying. And in Thank the you. process of us growing our business relationship, there were times where we're wearing so many hats where there were certain hats where he came to me. We were in a situation mm, where I was like, sense. I just need a dad right now. I don't need a boss. And so that's when him and I've had those heart to hearts where then he t- took that from our relationship I and see. applied it to sense. your relationship. No, thank you, Ryan. That is where again, because sometimes Zach, understandably, he would want to vent. But in that mode, to me, it was inventing. He was complaining mm-hmm. and I didn't want to hear it because I have to stay uh, in a certain space in my role in the company because there's different challenges that I have. Mm-hmm. 
So no, I didn't want to hear about whatever it might have been that was important to Zach. So it wasn't that he was wrong, but I wasn't wrong also to go, well, I, it's not important in the scheme of the business side. Yeah. So it was really beautiful through these things that he would just go, hey, just venting. And then I, I literally would be able to like... You could switch, you could switch gears if you yeah. want. Like. Uh, or he, we talked business. Mm-hmm. Even the other day, I was in full business mode and Zach goes, I go, Zach, he goes, well, good morning, dad. He answered the phone answering a question that I didn't ask. And I was like, He's a, I, that's probably why you called. I'm like, no, actually, I just called to see what you guys were doing today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it, it's beautiful. But again, most time we always say all that, but mm-hmm. some, but that's the beauty. And, and obviously, there was some grain pains there. Um, and thank you for clarifying. For people that don't know us yet or the show, uh, you know, we have the privilege and the blessing to work together. Mm-hmm. So hence with you, especially because I've worked with Zach before, mm-hmm. the KO days, we've done things before. A lot of- a lot of we, your career we've over overlapped mm-hmm. a lot more. Yeah. You and I, Kaz, have never overlapped officially. Mm-hmm. You'd always help and be a huge part, G and all of that, mm-hmm. but it was always a blessing. And meaning that work wise now, well, it's not it's a blessing, but it's also it's a partnership. A partnership, it's challenges. Yeah. Um, you know, all the things that come with that. Uh, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Hence, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Yeah. Everybody, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur until you have to do the things entrepreneurs have to do. Well, that means you're broke. That means checks and like even joking the other day like i want to give myself a raise give yourself a raise you know <laughs> it's like oh, oh wait i have to go get it <laughs> yeah exactly. i have to go on another client <laughs> yeah but that's the beauty of it hence learning from that is daddy first because especially you being pregnant listen uh, there is legitimate emotions there's legitimate days that you're just like i just need a minute mm-hmm. you know i mean that's not, but i think that again goes to our our communication and respect for each other, which yeah. is one of the things I want to share with people listening. Because they go, well, what's one of your key secrets? It's not that it's a secret. It's, just, it's, it's available. Mm-hmm. It just takes intention. Yeah. And application. And that's it. It, it. And if you just slow down for a moment, oh, my wife in this case, or my, my daughter, or my husband, or my son, uh, they might be a little hungry. Let me see what they want. It's just stop mm-hmm. for a moment. And I know that shift. I know, Zach, for you, uh, that started shifting being married. And really shifting now, you can't just show up, oh, yeah, Mari's breastfeeding now, but there'll be a day like, oh, well, oh, shoot, what's Amari going to eat? You can't just wing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so that, and now for you guys with OW, you have to like really start planning more ahead. And so I, I think it's great. So I want to, that was a great intro. I think that kind of set a tone, but I wanted to flip the script a little bit today. Mm-hmm. I, again, part of, you guys heard this is, it, it, it's not easy, you know, we come from a world of running, and Zach would always say, uh, smooth is, uh, what did you say, right? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That one, thank you. And there's a beautiful balance, right? You guys doing a triathlon, even the advice we got from Juan is, yes, you can't sprint off the gate. You have to pace yourself. And then once you have a, a gauge, you kind of know, I, I can go a little harder. I can go a little harder, right? And, and that's the beauty of life. Well, I think here, it's important because for the first time in my life, in my careers, you know, I've said that I, Brownstone wouldn't be what it is to me if it weren't for Zach's involvement. Obviously, Daniel and I have an amazing partnership. Uh, and Zach, you and I have always worked as partners. Uh, and I love it, you know, and that's a beauty. And to see in your growth and your maturity is absolutely thrilling to me. And to be able to share this journey with you. Uh, because of that hard work, it's opened the doors for you know, ultimately, I feel my calling and passion of connecting people and, and this forum and then to have your sister now kind of jump in and with her own vision of this. So I preface this back to you guys. Each of you now, I feel like God is here, right? A lot of what I did. I mean, a lot of your help, of course, but I, I, I led the way to this point and I'll continue leading where I need to lead. But I feel at this point, your voices need to be heard um, within our family. Uh, you know, in fact, you said it once before, like, I I want to be able to have everybody have their own, but also come together when it's right. Mm-hmm. Some holidays, yeah, you know, we're going to just, me and Nikki and Noir are going to go camping, or you guys going to be in Germany. It's okay. And then it's also nice when we're all together. It's, it's a beautiful balance. So I want to turn it over to you, Zach, first of saying this. How do you see the next steps with your voice being heard as you help us lead Brownstone from your end, obviously, you know, how, how do you see that world 
for us, our relationship, our relationship with Daniel, how does that come? How does that excite you for providing for your family and, and us? Yeah, no, I love it. Um, how does it excite me? I'm very, very excited for the future. Um, back in 2015, when I went to Africa, um, I was there for three weeks. Um, when people ask me, what's the happiest time in your life? I always think to that moment. It was 2015 and I'm in Africa and I was the happiest I ever was. And it was because my focus wasn't on me. My focus was on serving others. It was about others. And um, that's something that has always been in the back of my mind. It's been in my heart, something that I've been trying to walk out, trying to figure out, trying to unravel. What does that mean? And uh, it's been through, you know, at Brownstone, one of the things we do as a company from led by our leader, uh, Daniel and his book club, he does book reading and the newest book we're starting to read is what's in it for them. Mm. And um, it's really hitting the nail on the head for me because I'm a, you know, I've always been a firm believer that this life isn't about us. You know, it's about what's going on in us and through us and what's going to happen through our journey and our testimony. And so what I'm learning is that for me and for my life, I just want to serve in every capacity that I can. I want to serve my sister. I want to serve my father. I want to serve my wife and my daughter and, and my, my, my brothers and everyone that I come across. I want to serve. I don't think I'm meant to be here to take. I think uh, most more of this, I think the beautiful part of life is found in serving. You, you, life becomes bigger mm -hmm. when you start serving. Um, life can get pretty small when you take. You, mm -hmm. you, you hit your finish line when you take. There's no finish line when you serve. And so I think for where I want to go and what I want to do with my voice is I want to live in such a way that my life speaks giving, my life speaks serving. It's not what I say, it's not, it, it's not what the words that come out of my mouth, but it's more about who I am, the actions I've done, the steps I've taken. Um, I want people to see that and be like, well, how did he get there? How did he do that? Yeah, and I, and I want to touch on that son because i think this is important people to hear that it was a strong battle for you because your version of serving was a certain way for a long time it was people pleasing right which you felt like well i can't i can't have money or i can't have influence but the very thing that you didn't want i remember years i remember houston one of the biggest talks we ever had is the very things god said that's what i want for you yeah. he's put you in leadership everywhere yeah at I, church your home yeah. brownstone Today, me, you didn't know I was going to say these things today. You didn't know I was going to like, what is your voice for our future, yeah. right? And I think, but I think what you've seen that could, is a beautiful praise is that you have, God obviously has enlightened you that serving is stewarding what you have to serve at a greater capacity, Yeah. right? So it's not just being in Africa, which is beautiful, but it's like job opportunities, what you've done with uh, Carla and Sarah, that you as a, as a boss can like, yeah, let's take a moment about and talk about your life. You just serve them. Yeah. That helps them. Because yes, some are meant to live and be Africa and Mexico, beautiful. But right here, we also need people to help lead uh, that leads into healthier families. Yeah. So it, it's, I love seeing that in you, that, that switch that the serving is still serving. But it just looks a little differently. Yeah, it looks a lot differently. You know, I used to serve to be filled. Mm. I'm now filled and I serve. Amen, yeah. You it know, you. It's, I'm not serving from a place of trying to fill a void. Yeah. Um, I'm serving because I have so much gratitude. So I, Overflow. It's, it's overflow. It's yeah, overflow amen. of my heart. Uh, God's done so much for me. He's yeah. done so much in me that I can't not serve right it's a beautiful it's, feeling it's just a response to what he's done to me Amen. and in me um, that's a good way to put it it's a response what he's doing through you mm -hmm. and to you that's, that's that's all it is now yeah and and that's just it, where i want to keep the focus and the, yeah. i, I want to take that you know you're right it what my biggest kryptonite has is turning into my biggest gift um and i believe that that's not a that's not by accident no you know that's how god works you know what what what, what you're struggling the most with most likely God will use that to be your testimony one day for, yeah. to help someone else through the same story. Well, you know? he, 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 he's taking your humble heart, your service attitude, giving you a territory, but because you're honoring him, 
you're keeping his hand and, he, and he's guiding that. So that's beautiful, Raya. Um, before we go over to Cassie, is there something though in that serving, is there anything that comes to mind of how that looks uh, business-wise or that you feel you, and maybe you haven't got that or it's not something to share yet, that how that might look to you as far as the next steps or a greater scope? Well, I think it's interesting. Um, it is in relation to business. You know, it, uh, it's something I, I give Daniel Daniel Brown a lot of credit with this because this book, I'm actually, it's really speaking to me in a lot of ways and I'm more intrigued now than ever to hear more about what this genius network is. Because ultimately with this, from the book, from when gathering, this genius network was developed because this guy wanted to put himself around other people who just wanted to give. Yeah. And so that is in the business world. And yeah. now they're, you know, and so I want to be that, I want to create value for myself by being, I want to be someone in your life that adds value to your life. And that value is I can help fill a gap. I can help build a bridge. I can help, you know, walk through the valleys with you. Um, so in business, it's just about creating value for me, creating value for Brownstone as setting us apart from other, especially when I think of builders, you know, builders aren't known to be the kind ones. I can't tell you how many times that I've entered this contractor building world that I've been told you're too kind for this business. You won't make it. You're, you're too nice. You're the nice guy, you know, but now we're seeing the fruits of me being kind of me serving our vendors, Uh, serving our, you know, I don't, I treat the janitor the same that I treat the CEO. You well, know, that comes from me, though, though, son. That comes from your people blessing, not people pleasing. Because, see, you know your voice. You're becoming to know it better. So, yes, you can easily, if you treat people right and you keep people in the parameters they're supposed to be in, because it is a business, and you separate that line, yeah. well, they will respond. And you are definitely um, helping show that to the world. Because also it's nice because it, it does lift, not that we need credibility, but your territory. Again, God is grooming. So when they find out that you're this leader or this leader and you're this kind, you still get things done, they're still done right, it does add a little <clears throat> ump to it, which is beautiful because I think it also inspires people. So that's that's beautiful, Ryan. Thank you. Um, Cass, what about you? Uh, now that you, you know, in the last four, five months almost, a lot's changed. Um, You've always been more reserved about your faith. Like it's always been there, it's always been strong, but you're not as vocal about it. And that's good, but that's your walk. But now that you're starting to really see the vibey world and and some of the pieces that you, it doesn't make sense that, oh, oh, oh. I, I feel like that's some of the things that are starting to come. So how does that look to you now? Uh, compared to you, for your growth. Like Zach shared his growth. He had a certain view of things that now it's only amplified. And actually, I can see the excitement of instead of being intimidated by a genius network, it's like, wait a minute, these, these people are, are leaders. And if they're good leaders, that means they're going to bless their people. So it's actually beautiful. So how does the stage look for you as it's adjusting? Um, I think... That, I don't know, I think in the last five months, so much has changed. And it even stems from like my my current environment has been a lot. You know, there's been like so many moving parts, like moving to a city where I don't know anyone. I don't have friends or family there. And then, you know, having a baby, going fully entrepreneurial, so work, working remotely in a city with no community, I've been kind of, it felt like almost, almost stripped of everything, but also given the best blessing. So it, I think my mind, it's just, I was, it's been a growth <laughs> few months for sure. And um, I know it's all been preparing me to this very moment of where I'm at today. I've never felt more peace in my life. Mm-hmm. I, I've never felt more, even though I'm scared, I've never been comfortable, not comfortable, but excited for the, for this season, even though I'm scared, yeah. it's a scary thing to, um, to embark on and, uh, also be now in the site of 
I'm going to be a mom, you know, that yeah. like, you know, one prepares you for that. Like, look, when you, you go get your driver's license, you go and you prepare and you have a test and then you're set free. Like with mom, it's like all of a sudden your whole, whole life just changes in an instant and you no longer think about yourself and, and you want to do everything right. And I've always been very, um, protected of when I was ready to have children and I have an amazing husband that has always um, respected that boundary where I wanted to wait to have children to a little bit later in life. Um, simply because I wanted to be, I thought if I, the better I am, the better mom I'm going to be. Right. And I thought that was exactly how, you know, every American story you hear, you get married, you buy a house and you have a baby. Well, we built that life in Austin. Like we bought our first home. Um, you had good jobs, everything was secure. And then, you know, at, at a moment we're moving across the country again, leaving the house that we built, we went full living in the house that I thought that's where we were going to grow our family to a city where I don't have community. I I'm rebuilding if you will. And then we get pregnant during a season where I'm completely rebuilding, even in my career life. And I still there's I still have moments of like why I thought I waited this long so I could be in a position to not be fearful to not think of oh where's the income or anything like that but I now know it's 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 for a reason it's to build me up to be the strongest I could ever be because I wouldn't I am at the same time I am such a pleaser in in a good way I like to give I bred from the same tree that we're all from I give it's it's my I, I i absolutely love that but in in this community where i don't have the grasp of being able to physically do that it's put it's now put the mirror i have to look in the mirror more yeah i well, have to look at myself more and be okay with putting fueling myself and i've never been in a position where i've actually sewed into me mm -hmm. um so much and then now it's like oh you're gonna be a mom and also work on yourself, even though I thought I was waiting. I thought I did all that, but I've now like uncovered a new, a new season of my life. Like, oh, I I'm not done yet, or I'm just getting started, or there, God had this for a reason. And I know that's what keeps me going because I do have my doubts. I do have my down moments of like, oh, I don't get to be, and, and I, this sounds so first world. So I, I may, I see this in, like, I don't like, oh, there's not a nursery I get to prepare for. We're going to be moving when the baby's a month old, maybe, you know, like we don't have. And to me, that's the, the lack of stability made me feel like I've failed already. And that's that's warped thinking. That's not true. I'm just yeah. as much, just I'm very well equipped. I'm very excited. I always knew from day one I was meant to be a mom. I yeah. just wanted to wait longer so that I had pieces in place that I didn't want to. I didn't want to. um What's the word I'm looking for? You want your child to carry your baggage. Yeah. Almost uh, like well, the, the, like there's no perfect setting. There's no correct. perfect time. Well, and I think I was so warped that, oh, wow. Like I, this, all this planning I did is completely irrelevant, but it's now the most beautiful. I couldn't think of a better way because I wouldn't have gone off on my own. I wouldn't have went full entrepreneur. I wouldn't have then started a partnership with you, dad. I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't get stripped of everything. Yeah. Right. And, and you know what? Beautiful words, Cass. And this is what I want people to hear because it's, it's raw truth. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you had a plan, but you weren't putting everything before God's plan. Mm -hmm. We've all been there. And God loves you so much that he's like, I think I have something a little bit better. Yeah. And at first, no, nope. like everything. On the first, I have been on the call many times with you when I would call to say hi. And you just start crying. <laughs> yes. You know, like the minute you just, I couldn't, you know, but because I felt your pain. But if you guys think of the first episode, some of the best moments that we shared were moments where everything was stripped away from me. Yeah. Correct. And therefore you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that bond is what we have. Yeah. Now God's favor is we don't need to, Jesus, they go back that far yeah. because wisdom. I don't even know if I answered your question. No, <laughs> you, you, it's okay because it led to, you releasing it mm -hmm. and that's what i've seen i think that's the truth in it that's what i would like to get like if anyone heard this it's it's being like wherever you are in life wh whatever season you're in the three of us are in a completely different season 
but we're all like it leads to even conversations I've heard you recently do. It's like we're all suffering in our own way, but it's 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 meant to be happening. It's meant yeah. it's preparing us because if everything was always easy, if everything was always according to plan, we would live like robots. We and then we're not we, meant to do that. We're not meant we're yeah. meant to go through highs and lows. But it's how we get there. It's how our mindset is. It it's how we apply. It's how we sew into each other. It's like people People want to hear more about us because of our bond, because we are brother, sister, father, daughter, father, son. You know, it's it's beautiful and it's it's definitely unique. But I think it just all stems from we constant we, every day we put in work to make it happen. A hundred percent. And I think that's the strongest message is we make the efforts. Mm -hmm. It's not just good intentions or, hey, I wanted to call you today. No, we actually do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's important because he... At the end of the day, just going to your plan cast, like <clears throat> I remember having a conversation when you guys were gonna move to Austin. And I thought in my heart, like, that's what I prayed for you guys to get away from everything. As much as at that time I wasn't as involved in Austin specifically. Mm -hmm. But I just knew that it was good for you to get away, right? And yeah. and then he took you to San Francisco. And even the first year you fought it, right? Mm -hmm. The whole thing. And then finally LW and all that and here you go but I think that's the beauty is that it's by no accident no it, you know? but it's also you doing your version of what we did in the KO days mm -hmm. saying that no matter where we go as long as I have my husband and I have a healthy baby nothing else matters mm -hmm. right and you keep things in perspective Absolutely. same with Zach and Nikki I mean you guys went through something Zach had a whole plan Mm -hmm. The ranch and everything made sense and perfect story and we did all the things. And God's like, not only am I not going to honor that right now, yeah. I'm going to move Take you it all. and put you into this and this. And I, I don't, but guess what? You turn quickly to see the good in it. We saw that we had the means to make things happen. And it was the best thing that you could have done because it was the three of you starting your family. Yeah. yeah. See, again, when we get out of the way. So we got it. Most of the time, we're in the way. Yeah, we are. And Cass, you being the baby of of us, and then as you're now growing, I you know we we joke when first there was one, you know, and then it's like boom, 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 and then everyone that comes along that, whether they're actual family or friends that come alongside. I think that's the important thing is do the work, not take things for granted. And a home is only as good as what you make it, whatever that is, and wherever you are, no matter what you that's have. It. Yeah, so I, I think you both answered that beautifully. Thank you. So now, like every I've been doing is each of you now get to ask me a question because I have two really good ones for you guys after that. So who wants to go first? Oh, man. I haven't like mastered on the question I'm going to ask. <laughs> I'm like now in the hot seat. Hang on, hang on. I think. What do I want to ask my father? Live on the air? Well, not really live, but. We're not gonna edit this out. Yes. <sighs> what do I want to ask you right now? What is it? I got my question. I've actually asked you this question. Um, can't tell you the year, but it was me and you at an LA Kings game. Mm -hmm. What? And I asked you. It, it was a, <laughs> Yeah. A hockey game that, with dad? That, that, that's a Zach question. That is, <laughs> and Tom Hanks was in front of us. Yep. Tom Hanks ended up sitting right in front of us. I said hi to him. I did, because I wanted a selfie. Oh. Um, but uh, <laughs> I asked you this question there, and I'm going to ask it again, um, but with the both of us. How does it make you feel, or what is it like that, you know, I asked, you say that you told us that you struggle with men having real finding relationships, friendships with men. So I asked you, you know, what was it like that God gave you your best friend and a, and a son? And I yeah. ask you that same question now with, you know, I know you have several women friends, but I also know that my sister and I, we really are, you, we look at you as our father, but truly as our best friend as well. So how does it feel to have your best friends as your children? Well, it's a great question, and my answer is a little different from back then, which is great, um, because I feel that um, as much as I'm so good in so many areas that I allowed myself 
to speak the truth of my life, but not put the work into making the kind of men that I wanted to have. So what I did is I bypassed men, went to an easier source, which is valid in the women, because like I said, not too long ago, they, they rejoiced with me, they cried, I could just be that. Where with men, it was always difficult. There was always a little bit of envy, or there's a little bit of jealousy. There was, it was just never easy. Yeah. It was always complex. So then you get tired of that. But then I realized uh, that I needed, and I'll answer your question specifically, but I feel that you pose something. I also realized that I believe in the family more than anything. And I, I, it is my duty and my honor to sow into other men and them sow into me. So to answer your question specifically, it feels great, especially now that you're older, especially now that you you really relate a lot more because now you wouldn't hesitate two seconds to take a bullet for Amari. And now you understand what it's like to be a father. You wouldn't, there's nothing, it's not even a question. It'd be a reaction. Well, now for me that I can, you know, when I went through something pretty hard these last couple of years, you specifically, you know, you, you immediately allowed me to be real, which I appreciate, because in the past, not you meaning, but it could have came across as a little judgmental, because yeah. you're battling your own insecurities, yeah. Yeah. but they didn't always allow me because I'd feel like, I don't want to hear the disclaimer. Yeah. And I thank God to the man you are, because your disclaimer is gone. Now you might have wise wisdom to share, which is good, but I also see you be wise about when you share that wisdom. Yeah. So it feels great to answer your question specifically. It's blessed. I don't take any of those moments. Hence why I feel God is, I sat quietly on my comments of wanting to hear both of you because I feel I can be me with you. You've allowed me to have that space and I appreciate it because I am just a guy. I didn't have role models. I didn't have guys that I can just, Go have a beer with and just enjoy. Now, I have you, I have JP and other good men that I, I can enjoy just a nice beer and just relax and not feel. Daniel also, as a man, that's been great, right? Meaning just other yeah. good men. So he's, so that's why I'm also doing things with you. I asked you, hey, does this work? Do you feel this? And you're like, yeah. You know, and I love that, that I'm living life with both of you. So sorry it was a long answer, but I'm grateful that the very thing, kind of like what you said earlier, the very thing that you ran from, the very thing that God said, I'm gonna make you great at. So I feel that I did my part with women, a lot of great victories there. I'll continue to do what I can with whatever, but I also need to sow into the men that are supposed to lead their families. Huh. And I see today more than ever, more men needing to be men and it's not the macho it's not about being macho it's about saying hey god set a purpose for the man to love his wife so much that she was gonna love him mm -hmm. that's the law of god only so there's an order in a good way yeah um but when it's done right it's a beautiful thing yeah what about you baby i think um thanks for your answer yeah the ffl Best friends for life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, honestly, you know, like you having your own podcast um, now and, you know, it's it's neat that you put this little twist in it that people could ask you something because, you know, I think um, people listen because they also want to hear and learn from you. So I guess my question to you in this year, I mean, after all the things that you've gone through heavily in the last year and a half, two years of your life, so much has changed. So many things have happened. So much reworking has been done. Um, but what is like something that's very prominent that you, what is something so heavy that you've learned in these past, I was, you can just even do this year and what you're doing to like, what, what you're doing, like what did you learn and how you're applying that? So people going through other hard seasons in life can, can take that. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I think for me is that we have always looked at 
hard times is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think it is. Yeah. I think if, if some of the hard things that I didn't go through, uh, I wouldn't have the life I have today. Yeah. So I think for me, uh, when something good, like conviction is God's way of steering us better. Mm-hmm. That's why it's conviction. Guilt is a wallowing feeling of disappointment. Where conviction kind of nudges you like, you could do better. Yeah. Right? So I feel like I work really hard to stay in conviction. Right? Like when I share with you about poker stories, it's not like I did something horrible. But it's more like, I don't like this feeling. Mm-hmm. And that's God saying, I, I don't want you doing it that way. Yeah. Right? So if there's something there, I'm like, mm, okay. So I think... Part of the hard lessons is I look forward to them. It's my perspective. I look into and I kind of, like Eric said not too long ago, I, I lean into God into that hard season. Yeah. So it's kind of like, okay, God. It's like, bring it on. Bring it on. It's kind of like when I share that story about double blessed, like I think back at Yes You Can when I go, Zach, um, we're going to go handle the youth in an area and we got approved by the school board to go on them to get our fingerprints and all that done. And I remember Zach was in the stage of his life where he was a little punkish. He's teen and, you know, just... Bandana that's all, stage? Bandana. Yeah, remember your eight, bandana eight, stage? 18 years, 17 yeah. years old. Yeah, Sean Loeffler days and all that. <laughs> but I remember <laughs> Zach, Zach's life turned when he heard a little boy. He would always went around the room, remember you know. This story. And uh, he shared, oh, yeah, yeah, we had to go bury my brother. He just got through a drive-by. And I know Zach just like, kind of like I saw this this look like, man, I'm over here complaining or doing all these things. And this little boy at school with a pretty good attitude mm-hmm. just had his brother killed. Yeah. yeah. Right? So again, like we've shared is if we stop every time something bad happens, instead of like, by the way, people's natural reaction, oh, what I do wrong? Why yeah. me? This, 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 this whole like sucked it mm-hmm. out. Yeah. It was like your complaint. Yeah. Right. Instead of going, yeah, it sucks. Mm-hmm. No one likes to train hard. But when you guys are done with your race, man, the feeling I can only imagine, it's going to be like, dude, that, that was good. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, look at the problems. If we go into it going, okay, God, I, I, I am really upset right now. I know there's good here. I can't see what you're talking about. But I'm going to say thank you because I know good will come. Man, that's powerful. Yeah, so that's hard. powerful. That's so true. You know, and then you look back because right now we could all think of all the things that we didn't think we could make it through. Absolutely. And we made it. Yeah. So wisdom is now going, okay, if I can get through those things and releasing it is key. Mm-hmm. We don't have, like I said, when you two and Zach started driving you and you now is, I mean, you're mommy now, but as soon as you feel the flesh of LW in your arms, it changes things. Yeah. yeah. You know? But he just kicked. <laughs> yeah. That's like a big kick. <laughs> he likes it, LW. It, that was crazy. It changes <laughs> it. But the key, in my opinion, to your question is not look at hardship like a punishment. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of brings... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. It, I don't know if you remember this. I remember I was ha- you were dropping me off at school. Not to go on a tangent, but it just brings me back to the, the thought process I've always had because... I'm very good at, I don't want to complain. I don't want to think, I don't want to be like, woe is me, because, but I don't want to be not present in my hard times to yeah. learn to it. Yeah. Because my mind will be like, oh, I, do, I don't have it that hard, all things considered. Because I can look at that story here, someone battling cancer, someone yeah. losing their mom. There's, there's, I mean, there's, there's, we're all going through our own things and we all have our suffering moments. It could always be worse. It could always be worse. Mm-hmm. And I've always, I've always had that installed in me. And I believe that's obviously a, a big part of how you raised me and how I'm very optimistic. And so we don't stay in those, um, those mindsets. And I think that is, uh, how you live. And I believe that's how we live as well. Like it's, we don't stay in the hard times. It doesn't mean we don't ride them. It doesn't mean we don't endure them and what or they're teaching them. us. Yeah. But I think that's something that's really powerful about our family. And that's what I would want. That's what I even share with my friends and things like that when I do get a chance to talk to them, but it's a, it's like perception, you know, it's, um, it's, it, it brings reality back in that things, yes, things can be worse. It doesn't mean you can't sit here and feel, have your moments, but it's, if you stay there, you're not living and we're meant to keep pushing forward through the hard times, through the good times. And so it just brought me back to, 
I remember you, I was upset and you were like, well, you could have it worse. And I was actually mad at you that you had said that because I was trying to feel. Yeah. And then I'm like, then I felt guilty because I was like, I went down a path of, oh my gosh, yeah. I am being a complainer. How dare me? Like I could have it worse. This is such a petty thing to be upset about, whatever it is. But it's always, it's always shaped me and it always centers me because not that I want that I can't have my own feelings. I am an individual, but that is something that I think people so often lose sight of because they're so drawn in and then it, they don't release anything so they can't receive more. Well, look, it's just like they say, the, the beautiful what you share, baby. And look, it's like the Olympic athlete, they, we've talked about it quite a bit, is is trains all their life and, and they get the medals, but then they don't know what to do afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I've always shared with you guys that to me, a true champion, anything can be a champion in everything. In anything and everything if they apply themselves and it's the mindset right and I think it's not that we can't complain it's not that we can't vent it's not that we can't just be human and feel mm -hmm. but at the end of the day there's a fine line between feeling and being in the moment yeah. and then dragging others into our misery mm -hmm. that's going to like change family us. always has that like oh they're too positive they're always happy they're yeah. always optimistic and it's almost considered like a hateful thing like, We've gotten that all the time. You guys yeah. always say, like, "Do you guys really have? Do you guys really hang out with your dad? Do you guys?" And then that's not hate. It's just it's. I just want people to know that our hearts are so pure in it, and I I can't express it enough that like it, I'm so honored to be here with my dad and my brother and just people to hear this because even if it is one person, it's it's such a powerful message that like life is so much bigger than us. Right. Yeah. And we're meant to be with people. We're meant to live it out loud and hard things are going to come. And I remember even in my vows to my husband on our wedding day, which our anniversary is tomorrow, six years yes, married. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. A little pluggy there for my husband. <laughs> but um, for... Did you forget? <laughs> <laughs> He's also behind the scenes. <laughs> um, Wait, who are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember one of the vows I said to him was that committing myself to you, even though some of our worst days haven't arrived yet, yeah. And yeah. I believe that to be true in any relationship, any friendship, every in life. all in life, yeah. that we don't know what's going to happen. Not even 30 seconds after we finish this, this episode. So yeah. it's just something that I, I believe that's like a key motto in our family, but it's something that I, inspires me to reach more people to just live that way and to start thinking that way. And yeah, I'm going, going down. Perspective is everything, you know, perspective is, is everything. And, I think something that you and I have both struggled with growing up is that our feelings are extreme. Mm -hmm. We feel a lot. Um, and I'll, I'll speak for myself that I, it took me a long time to not hate myself for those feelings. My feelings were so extreme, so much that it always felt like it, it put me on the outskirts. Like I didn't, it felt like no one else ever felt the way I felt, mm -hmm. even though that's a lie. And so what I had to eventually, the Lord had showed me through experiences and trials is that feelings are valid, but they don't have the final word. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest shift for me is that feel, I'm going through something, I gotta feel it. I gotta walk it out. I gotta experience it. You know, that's when I call dad and I'm like, dad, I just need to vent. Those are the moments where I'm feeling and mm -hmm. I just need to feel. I just need to get it out. I don't know, I'm not gonna say the right words. I'm not, you know, it's, it's not going to be politically correct. I don't really know. I'm just feeling. Mm -hmm. But then it's after that vent, I'm done. Once it's out, it's out. I've released it. I've given well, it Well, I, I remember one thing, Zach. I remember one time specifically because, you know, Cass, going back to that, they weren't pretty with Zach and I. They weren't pretty. They, they got ugly many times. Yeah. And there was one time I was in the car and I was just having a hard day itself. Again, I'm not Superman running around. I, I just have done a good job of, venting my own way a little differently not right or wrong just different and i remember this particular moment I, I, I remember i just parked and zach was going off on one of his things and just before the daddy and all that it was just he went right into it and again it wasn't that he was wrong but i wasn't wrong either i just i didn't want to hear it yeah mm -hmm. right and it, it wasn't worth this was years ago and i i remember i was starting to see red and you know you both know i i've done a much better job i I see red, I really lose sight that you're my daughter and you're my son. It's not right, but it's the way I was, yeah. wired, you know? And, and then Zach said, 
But I think I even hung up on him the first time. I probably did. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so guys, just I, I, I probably he's, did. He's love happiness. <laughs> It's valid. I, I deserved it. Keep going. Uh, but then he called back and goes, Dad, I just need you to effing listen. I'm your son. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, kind of like when you did that couple of years, and it just like, God just said, Henry, just shut up and be there for your son. And I did. And yeah. that was the turning moment. It really wasn't from there. We got better at. Yeah. Uh, and then even in those conversations, the lie that I would always hear in those moments was my feelings don't matter that you never said those words right? ever. Those words never came out of your mouth. But every time you, I would go to vent to you without expressing that I was about to vent, what I would hear in your response is, get over it, doesn't matter. You're bigger than that. And at, all I wanted to hear was, you're valid. I see you, I hear you, you know, for a moment. But that's because I, I was very insecure extremely insecure. I didn't know who I was. And I honestly was living off of feedback as opposed to living for faith, living yeah. in faith and walking in faith. I was walking in feedback. Yeah. I would do something mm -hmm. and then be like, Hey, what are your thoughts on this? You're not like validated. No, I needed to be validated. Mm -hmm. I needed to be affirmed. And that's so much of what's yeah. going on today. And that's and relatable that's for a lot of people. Where I needed to get through was mm -hmm. no, I, the Bible says to walk by faith, not by feedback, you know? So I need to trust what God's put what in front of me. See. Yeah, I got to step trust, into it. Tr trust the right F, right? Not the fear yeah. or the feed of people. But I think that's strong what you both said and what you said. Because look at it. Again, it's not that people are wrong. But I would say emotions not controlled correctly or funneled through God are dangerous. Exactly. That's you, what I'm were, saying. you were in your mind, you were like, I just need you to say this. So again, what someone else needs to do yeah. to feed you. Correct. I'm just saying, I'm not that guy right now. Yeah. Because I'm trying to deal with my own crap. Correct. Right? So to your point, we're all in a different season. Mm -hmm. But when you really lay it down, and yes, it's it would be pride for him not to go, hey, I just need my dad for a moment. Yeah. Pride would say, no, he should know me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No different than Nikki coming to you and going, he needs to understand everything I'm going through. Yeah. No, sometimes just say it to me. Just communicate. Yeah. yeah. You can't read people's What minds. are you needing right now? But everyone's guilty of that. Correct. Everyone is. Everyone. And that's I'm why going back to your comment, Castle, saying like, no, if you want something good, then work for it. Yeah. yeah. So let's go back to the relationship with God. If you want a great relationship with God, if you want to know the favor of God, which means he's going to give you a little extra blessing, it's because we're seeking it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's again, like in America, you want the American dream, it's available to everybody. It is available. Yeah. But most, the first sign, ah, it's Biden, it's Trump, it's this, it's that. No, how about you just maybe learn to make it work make for you? Make your path. Yeah. 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 Walk it out. Um, but one so foot good. in front of the other. So good. Uh, this is why our show, I mean, look at our, our uh, but uh, wow, time flies. Uh, wow. We're going to have the whole thing, uh, and we might even get to four or five fans. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, you. he's dissing his own show, no, people. No, I am play, play. Yeah, play, play. play, play. But no, I do want a couple good takeaways. Thank you for both your great questions towards me. And obviously, we can barely touch on, uh, on so many beautiful things. But I think... I guess I'll start. My takeaway from anyone hearing the thousands listening to us and the thousands that will watch this is this. We are real. There is no perfect situation on this earth, but we're willing to go through it together. Mm -hmm. That to me is the takeaway. Yeah. You want it? Pick up the phone call, your mom, your daughter, whoever it is. It doesn't mean that the response, like Zach said, is going to feed you. Mm -hmm. You might not get the response you want or any response a couple of things I'm going through, mm -hmm. but you did your part, which means you made the effort and you let it, you release it. Yeah. That's it. What's your takeaway, baby? And then Zach can close us out. I would say, um, anyone listening to it, whoever hears this is whatever hard season you are in right now, just keep going. It sounds cliche, even simple really it's really something that probably everybody tells you if you have a community around you but just keep going um push through the fear push through for the hard and don't give up on yourself like i would i don't know how to put else put it there you're going through this for a reason so you're not alone there there is a big reason why you're going through what you're going through even though you may not see it right now may mm -hmm. not understand it right now may be the most unfair thing that you've ever have to endure, but you're lucky to be alive and breathing today. If you're hearing this, keep going. 
You're going to get through it. Amen, baby. So good. Peanut? If you're waiting for a sign, this is your sign. <laughs> Call your family. Go do it now. Stop second guessing yourself. Stop doubting. Stop waiting for feedback. Start, for business. Start waiting. Just stop waiting for anyone to tell you it's a good idea. Some people won't believe it until they see it. And mm-hmm. you're right now mm-hmm. you're the only one that sees it. Amen. So take that step. Um, and to second off to piggyback off my sister, life isn't happening to you, it's happening for you. Yeah. Make that perspective shift and everything will change. Well, guys, uh, I'm very thankful. Everybody, thank you for the support of the show. And you guys, again, blessed every day. And that's why I love this hat. Because, and like we said in the beginning of the show, Zach, uh, when you feel blessed, you want to share it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a response. And and it really is. It's an overflow. But when our cup is low, which we all go through, that's why it's beautiful to have people around you that can feed into you. So. I love you both very much. Very thankful. Love you so much. Thank love you. you. Thank you to our amazing host. Hey, coach Henry <laughs> Thank you to our behind the scenes producer. <laughs> and until next time, thank you for turning to Positive Attraction. Stay tuned for a lot of great things coming your way. God bless. Woo! Yay!